I will explain fractional equivalence using a tape diagram and number line. So we have been using area models to show equivalence in fractions using multiplication and division in the last three lessons. Well today in lesson 11 we're going back to a tape diagram. So I want you to notice the difference between a tape diagram and an area model. First of all, a tape diagram is very rectangular. It never has horizontal lines dividing it. A tape diagram only has vertical lines that go up and down. However, when you have an area model, an area model very likely could have a horizontal line and a vertical line. But a tape diagram will never have a horizontal line. Tape diagrams only have vertical lines. And they're very narrow and thin like a piece of tape. That's kind of where they get their, line, their name. So today we're going to be focusing on using a tape diagram and a number line. So we are not using area models today. Okay, we are back to tape diagrams. You'll see why shortly. All right, so I'm going to tell you that first of all, we're not going to use your math journal today. And the reason is I think that the skill that you're going to learn today is easier just to take a look at your problem set and it'll be just as effective as understanding. So you're going to notice that it says label each number line with the fraction shown on the tape diagram. Circle the fraction that labels the point on the number line that also names the selected part of the tape diagram. So this is something completely new. The first thing I want you to notice is the way that the number line is situated underneath the tape diagram. And you're going to learn this a little bit more whenever we get ready to draw number lines underneath our tape diagrams. But I want you to notice that this point lines up with this end of the tape diagram. And this point, it's actually a tick mark, we call it, is at the end of the tape diagram, and this one is right directly in the middle. So because this tape diagram represents one whole, then this part of the number line is zero, and this part of the number line would be one. So this number line also represents one whole. Now let's take a look at our tape diagram. So it's divided into one, two, three, four parts. So each of these represent one fourth. So what you're going to do is we're going to come right straight down from where the division is in our tape diagram and we're going to put another mark on our number line just like this. So now we have divided our number line into one, two, three, four parts also. Now we're just going to label these just like we would label our tape diagram. This would be one out of four or one fourth. This would be two fourths or one half and this would be three fourths. So this is how you label the number line with the fraction shown in the tape diagram. Now it says circle the fraction that labels the point on the number line that also names the selected part of the tape diagram. Well they have shaded one out of four. So that means that this tape diagram represents one fourth just like this number line does. All right, so let's try B. I know this is brand new so you shouldn't feel stressed that it's a little confusing to you. It's okay. All right, so again, this tape diagram represents one whole. So our number line is going to represent one whole too. So we're going to begin at zero and we're going to end at one. And then we're going to come right straight down from the tape diagram just like this. And we're going to make marks on our number line exactly where the divisions are or where they decomposed this tape diagram. So all I did was just come right straight down. Now this is one, two, three, four five, six, seven, eight parts in the tape diagram. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight parts on my number line. So that means each of these represents one out of eight or one eighth. So this would be one eighth and then I just count two eighths, three eighths, four eighths or one half, five eighths, six eighths, and seven eighths. Now when I come back to my tape diagram, they have shaded 2 out of 8, so I'm going to circle 2 eighths. Alright, now let's take a look at C. So do you remember where if this tape diagram represents one whole, that means that our number line begins at 0 and it ends at 1. Now we're going to just make lines on our number line or little tick marks exactly where the tape diagram has them. So I'm going to come right straight down and make one here come right straight down and make one here and we're just going to keep doing that all the way across. Try to make them as close to where they are on the tape diagram as you can so they don't get too close together. 
right, that's a bunch, isn't it? So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So that means that each of these units represent 1 12. That's exactly what they represent on my number line. If you look, I have 12 spots on here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So this would be no, no 12s. This would be 1 12, 2 12s, 3 12s, and so on. Go ahead and number yours along with me. And this one hoe could also be thought of as 12 twelfths, right? Which is the same as one hoe. All right, so now we have one, two, three that are shaded. So that means that this represents three twelfths. Now it says write a number sentence using multiplication to show the, rep the fraction represented in 1A is equivalent to the fraction represented in 1B. So I'm going to go split screen here so it's going to get a little bit smaller so that I can see over here a little bit about what they're talking about. So if you look here you can see that the amount shaded is exactly the same in A as it is in B. All they did in B is divide it, they decomposed it one more time. So I'm going to use multiplication to show that 1 fourth is equal to 2 eighths. Alright, so I've got I'm going to begin with 1 fourth, so I've got 1 over 4. And remember, whatever I multiply the numerator by, I have to multiply the denominator by. And I'm trying to get to 2 over 8. So they took each of the fours and they divided it into two parts. So I'm going to multiply the numerator times 2 and the denominator times 2. So I've got 1 times 2 equals 2 and 4 times 2 equals 8. Now it says we're going to write a multiplication sentence to show that the fraction represented in 1A is equivalent to the fraction represented in 1C. So 1A was 1 fourth. C is 3 twelfths. So I'm going to do the exact same thing, but I'm going to try to write a multiplication sentence to see if I can prove that 1 fourth is equal to 3 twelfths. Go ahead and pause the video here and see if you can figure out what goes in the middle portion of this number sentence to prove that 1 fourth is equal to 3 twelfths. When you have what you think the answer is, come back and check with me. All right, so now I'm going to begin with 1 and 4 as my numerator and denominator. So to get from 1 to 3, I'm going to multiply times 3. And you can see they divided the fourth into three parts. That's why we're multiplying times 3. And 1 times 3 is 3, and 4 times 3 is 12. All right, now, here's the fun part. You get to draw some number lines. It says, use each shaded tape diagram below as a ruler to draw a number line. Mark each number line with the unit fractions shown on the tape diagram and circle the fraction that labels the point on the number line. That also names the selected part of the tape diagram. So you get to draw a number line. Now you can freehand this number line, or if you don't feel like you can do a good job, I do have rulers in the classroom that are over by the telephone. So if you want to go and get a ruler, you may. All right, I have this tool that can make a nice straight line. So I'm going to make a line that it has to be right directly underneath your tape diagram. And make sure that you are putting arrows on each end. If not, you didn't create a line, you created a line segment. Lines have arrows on each end because they continue on and on in each direction. So make sure that you put arrows on each end. All right, so once you have your line drawn and your arrows, now we're going to come back and we're going to make our tick marks. So the first one's going to be at the beginning of the tape diagram, and then we're going to have one at the end of the tape diagram. So this is the portion of the number line that we're going to look at today. And then we're going to come back and make one every place that there is a decomposition in our tape diagram. So that's all of the marks that we need to make on our number line today. Now we're going to label it. So remember, the beginning of the tape diagram would represent 0 because there's nothing there. The end of the number line would represent 1 because our tape diagram represents 1 whole. When I look at my tape diagram, I have 1, 2, 3 parts. So that means each of these represent 1 third. So the first one would be 1 third, and the second one would be 2 thirds, and then this would be 3 thirds or 1 whole. Since I have 1, 2 thirds shaded, when it says circle the fraction that labels the point the num on the number line of the selected part, we're going to circle two-thirds. Okay? All right, let's try B. All right, so we're going to start with our number line. Oop. 
loops. It has to be as long as your tape diagram, preferably it needs to be, actually it needs to be a little bit longer. Okay, now we're going to come back. We're going to put our marks on here. So make sure that you have an arrow on each end. That's what makes it a line. And then we're going to put a mark at the beginning and a mark at the end. And then we're going to draw one mark every place that the tape diagram is decomposed. All right, so we have zero and one hole because this represents one hole. All right, so our tape diagram is divided into one, two, three, four, five, six parts. So that means each of these represents one six. So now we're just going to count one six, two sixes, three sixes, four six, five six, and this will be six six. So now we're going to circle one, two, three, four sixes because that's the amount that is shaded. All right, so if you feel comfortable, why don't you try to draw the number line for C all by yourself? If you're still a little bit unsure, at least go ahead and draw the line and label as much as you know how to do, and then come back and you can do the rest with me. But if you feel like you can do the whole entire number line by yourself, great. Try it, and then you can come back and check. All right, so I've got my arrows here, and now I'm going to start with 0 and one and because these are really small I have to be extra careful so that they don't get all jumbled up and I want to make sure I have to make the exact same number of lines as there are decompositions in the tape diagram or else my number line will not be accurate alright so I have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve I have twelve parts so that means each of these represents one twelfth so we're going to begin with zero and we're going to end with 1. So I have 1 twelfths, 2 twelfths, 3 twelfths, and so on. I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to count all the way across. Hopefully, this is what you did too. I hope that you can read this. It gets kind of small, but just notice that the numerator is counting and the denominator is always 12 because I have 12 parts. So for one hoe, it could be 12 twelfths or it could be one hoe. And we're going to circle eight twelfths because that's how much is shaded. All right, so for number four, it says write number sentences using division to show the fraction represented in 3A is equivalent to the fraction represented in 3B. All right, so let's go back here to split screen and take a look at this. So 3A is equal to 3B. So the only way I'm going to be able to use division on this is if I start with the big number and go with the smaller number. So I'm trying to prove that 4 sixes is equal to 2 thirds. So I want you to notice, when I do this, I have to put 4 sixes first because I cannot divide 2 thirds and get 4 sixes. So you're going to do exactly like what you did on the other problem, except we're going to use division. So we have to start with the numbers that are greater and we're trying to get to two-thirds. So again, I'm going to begin with four on, as the numerator and six as the denominator, and I have to figure out, hmm, what did we do to four sixes? Let's look at this for a second. So <clears throat> here's the parts, right? It was two parts here and it was four parts here. If you look at one-third, they divided it into two parts. So when I do my division sentence, I'm going to divide by two. 4 divided by 2 is 2, and 6 divided by 2 is 3. Now I'm going to do the exact same thing for B, except I'm going to prove that instead of 4 sixes, I'm going to prove that, let's scroll down here, I'm going to prove that 8 twelves is equal to 2 thirds. So we're going to begin with 8 twelves, and we're going to end with 2 thirds. So see if you can go back and look <clears throat> at A and see how many parts did they divide a third into to make it into a twelfth because here would be a third and here would be a third. How many parts did they divide one third into? That'll give you a clue as to how much to divide this by. See if you can't do the middle part all by yourself and then come back and we'll check. Okay, hopefully you figured out that they divided each part into four parts. Eight divided by four is two and 12 divided by 4 is 3. All right now we're going to partition a number line from 0 to 1 into fifths. So this time we're going to draw a number line 
without a tape diagram to model it. So we're just going to start here with a number line. Make sure you make it in the middle so that you have plenty of room. All right, and we're going to partition it into fifths. So I'm going to begin with a zero mark, and I'm going to end with a one. So this is just like a tape diagram. If I take a tape diagram and I divide it into fifths, that means that I draw four lines. So that's exactly what you're going to do. You're going to try to make them as equal as you can, just like if this were a tape diagram. So I've got one, two, three, four. So I've got one, two, three, four, five parts, just like I would if this were a tape diagram. Now I'm going to label them. One fifth, two fifths, three fifths, four fifths, and then this would be five fifths. Now it says decompose two fifths into four equal lengths. So if you look from here to here, this is my two fifths right here. You don't have to draw this part, but this is two fifths. I'm supposed to decompose this into four parts. You can see I've got two parts. So if I'm going to decompose this, I'm just going to divide each of these into half. So instead of being fifths, what would these be? If I went ahead and did that to every single part, how many parts would I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So these would be tenths. This would be one tenth, this would be two tenths or one fifth, and this would be three tenths, and this would be four tenths. Write a number sentence using multiplication to show what fraction represented on the number line is equal to two fifths. So if I had one tenth, two tenths, three tenths, four tenths. So four tenths would be equal to two fifths. So if I'm using multiplication, I'm going to begin with a smaller number, and I'm going to write a multiplication sentence to show that two fifths is equal to four tenths. So I would say two times, how many times did I divide it? I divided it into two parts, so I'm going to multiply the numerator and the denominator by two, and I get four tenths. Now it says write a number sentence using division to show what fraction represent on the number line is equal to two fifths. So I'm going to use the same number sentence, except I'm going to go backwards because I'm using division. So I'm going to show that four tenths can be composed into fifths using division. So if I have four over 10, instead of multiplying by two, I'm going to divide by two. So four divided by two is two, and 10 divided by two is five. I know that this last part here is a little bit tricky, Hang in there. We'll continue to work on this some more, so don't panic if you don't understand right away. All right, so that is it for today. I want you to notice that we went back to tape diagrams. Notice in all these tape diagrams, they only had one row. There was no horizontal lines like in an area model. And the reason for that is, is you can't have two rows here and represent a number line. So remember that if the tape diagram represents one hoe, your number line represents one hoe. It's dividing this line is just like dividing that tape diagram.